Hello everybody, my name is Tristan Murray and welcome back to the Greylock Reaction. If you didn't catch the first part, be sure to catch it in the description below because we're getting into it right now! You don't have time to think about what's happening! Well that broadcast went completely tits up, didn't it? I've been getting chewed out by our asshole CIA liaison for the past two hours. What? The fuck happened? Okay, but for real though, uh, if you didn't catch that first part, it's in the description below. It might make a little bit more sense. I basically went through half of the series of Greylock in the previous video, and now we are on tape 8. Old Odd Ends, if you don't remember the last time we left off, it was that news broadcast with the news uh, newsman who uh, got labeled a liar, saying that everything was going back to normal after the home invasion incident, but now we are here. And let's finish this amazing analog horror series together. Let's do it. Tape 8. Ah, uh, old Odd Ends. Greylock. 17 minutes. Let's see what we're in for. Right after the news broadcast. Well, that broadcast went completely tits up, didn't it? I've been getting chewed out by our asshole CIA liaison for the past two hours. What the fuck happened? We're looking into it, sir, but we experienced no issues with the broadcast in our end, so our engineers believe that the signal was hijacked before we were reaching the transmitter, but once we started receiving phone calls from viewers, we switched to a back. Okay, so this is the CBS executive. Uh, so these are the actual employees working at CBS. So we got two producers and then the executive, and they're talking about the broadcast from the previous episodes and how our, our news broadcaster was labeled a liar because it seems like they were trying to cover up that it's not all going back to normal just yet. But by then, the hijacker had already said everything they wanted to say, hadn't they? What a complete fuck up. They made us look like a fucking joke. I'm sure our most popular show. Speaking of which, Don, where the fuck is he? I can't get hold of him and he needs to get in here and read a statement to help clean up this fucking mess. Uh, well, we've been trying to reach him. We've called him multiple times. We've tried his patience. They can't find the news anyone's heard agent. Of him, but Right now we've got Gerald standing in for him tonight at Don Bissett's show. You've been to his house? Uh, well, no, I just thought that maybe he'd be upset if I did that. So. Get in your fucking car and go to his fucking house! I don't care if you kick down his front door and drag him here by his ear. You bring him into the studio. Do you understand? Damn, this executive is kind of an a-hole, isn't he? Yes, Mr. Rosen, um, of course, I'll do that right now. There's some real powerful people depending on us right now. They need us to manage the response to these events, <clears throat> to let the public know what's going on, and the last thing we need is it going wider than it already fucking has. So do what you need to do, or I'm going to replace you with some producers who actually know how to produce a fucking show. Sorry, the file you are trying to access has been destroyed and can no longer be executed or retrieved. Please choose another file. Sorry, sorry. Some interference happening. I don't Warning. know. Warning. Anomalous file detected. This file should not exist. Are you sure you wish to proceed? Opening file. Oh. Reverse personal log. Final. We've opened a personal log that wasn't meant to exist in the first place. This is gonna be. This is gonna be interesting. Calling all the way back to like the very first episode where we ex were extracting all of the files that we're viewing now. My name is Ron Eugene Rivers. The date is April 8th, 1987, about a quarter past nine at night. I was involved in the Morelli construction project at Mount Greylock. I was hired due to my background in anthropology and archaeology. I've worked to excavate a number of different historical sites. Paul Morelli took me on after securing a government contract for the Greylock project. So it looks like they were doing an expedition, like the miners in that one episode, where everyone was getting sick and they were seeing something in the woods. They were actually going into the Greylock mountain and they found that um, whatever kind of like ancient civilization that was down there, it looks like this guy is some kind of archaeologist. Um, Mr. Arnold, tell us more. I'm recording this because I believe my life is in danger. 
and I likely don't have a lot of time left, so I need to leave some kind of record of my findings. On March 24th, our crew came across tunnels in the mountain that had a multitude of ancient markings and artifacts. Yeah. On March 25th, Paul cleared the interior of the mountain and asked me, accompanied by a small crew, to look through the tunnels and record notes on what I was able to recognize. Paul is that miner that was uh, speaking in that previous video. I was then to report to one of the project directors, named Frank Porter, to offer my perspective on our findings. I kept this to myself at the time, but what we discovered in that mountain was not normal. Not only did I see the impact it was having on the crew, but certain aspects of my findings did not make any sense. Many of the artifacts were pre-colonial. All of the glitches and everything seem super real. Sorry to keep pausing, but I, I feel like if a reaction channel is just going to watch something all the way straight through without talking, what, what's even the point? So that's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to commentate on what I'm seeing and connect it to all the other episodes because this series has been very confusing thus far. I know it's about all like the thought forms and stuff. I can understand that like they were put into this facility and now they're breaking out and put it and uh and they broke out sorry and are now breaking into people's homes uh, presumably these are the thought forms but i don't know how the Greylock mountain fits into all this yet so i'm just trying to keep the puzzle pieces in my head so that i can connect them some were from native american tribes but there were other artifacts some mesoamerican and others were shockingly clovis in nature finding clovis artifacts here means that People have been coming to Mount Greylock since at least 11,000 BCE, but that's not all. Oh, no. Christ, huh? There are artifacts I found that could potentially be from even earlier Paleo-American cultures that we have yet to even begin studying. Then are they even human? There though? Are artifacts and writings left by the cultures that were pre-Columbian in nature. Wow. Transoceanic contacts prior to Columbus reaching the Americas has always been largely a theory, but, but the artifacts in this mountain, they, they prove it. Weird. Ancient Chinese, Arabic, Indian, Roman, Spanish, Viking, even ancient Greek and Egyptian are findings that they alone would change world history as we know it today. That's crazy. Wow. I'll admit, the anthropologist in me was thrilled. I couldn't believe what I was seeing. I figured it had to be a hoax, but I'm confident that it's all authentic. But my excitement was soon replaced with a looming fear and anxiety. I wonder why. How could such a place be so important to so many cultures for so long? There must be something immense here. Yeah, like, Whatever it was. if every, like, culture on the planet is gathering into one spot, the spot being this mountain, something's up. This, this series is kind of blowing me away with just kind of like the great concepts it's having right now like you know babies disappearing out of mother's stomachs the whole thought forms escaping and then committing a mass home invasion and then of course ancient artifacts and civilizations it's just all really cool so i just hit my desk that's probably gonna sound bad well that's why i left the project the tunnels all connected to a series of chambers deep into the interior of the mountain. Okay. That's where the majority of the relics were found. There were old baskets of herbs and spices, pottery, weapons and armor, talismans, and other religious items. Interesting. Countless other things, but all of it was there purposely. Bunch of artifacts. Offerings. Offerings. So, offerings to something, very Lovecraft, um, that there could be some kind of cosmic entity within this mountain. You're watching Cosmic Mysteries, a detailed look into how our Earth's moon came to be. of years ago, when our planet was still mostly fire and rock, and a Mars-sized planet that had been drifting through our solar system collided directly with the Earth. The impact was so powerful and violent that the rogue planet was blown into countless pieces of debris. This debris collected to form our moon. 
Many of the pieces of the unknown plan remain inside the earth to this day. Whenever I see a moon, I start thinking of Local 58. See if there's any connection here. Adam, Police Department, Dispatcher Carey speaking. Um, yes, I'm calling to report a break-in at my co-worker's house. Okay. What is your name, sir? My name is Liam Hollander. Okay, Liam, you said this was your co-worker's house. What is your co-worker's address? Uh, it's, uh, Parker, Parker Hill Road in Adams, uh, number 491. 491 Parker Hill Road, is that right? Yes. Okay, can mm -hmm. you tell me, is anybody hurt? Liam, are you still with me? Yes, sorry. Is anybody hurt? Yes. Like, oh! Oh my god! What the fuck? Witness many altars. That was... that that was... That was dark. Holy shit. Oh, Don is this news reporter, so... The guy who just reported to us that everything is... That was gonna be fine and was labeled a liar by whoever hijacked that broadcast. Uh, presumably, like, the thought forms or whatever. Broke into his house and did this to him. Damn. Then I witnessed many altars constructed out of the mountain stone, along with evidence of mass animal and human sacrifice. Ooh. And the carvings in the walls of these sacrificial chambers, I couldn't recognize a single familiar symbol. And it, it made me sick to even look at them. Let me be clear. I am not, nor have I ever been, a religious man. There's something in that mountain. I'm scared. Something people of countless cultures oh. over the history of our planet have been worshipping, but I don't know why. But I could feel it. Whatever's down there, I could feel it. It was like being trapped in a fever dream. I swear I could hear a voice and even felt compelled to go further to speak to whatever's down there. I don't know. I don't know. I, I haven't been right since I, I keep hearing this droning in my head. I'm, I'm wondering, we had the preacher and the radio in the second video. I'm wondering if it's, this is going to have some religious theme. Maybe this is quite literally the devil that's down there. I don't know, though. I guess we'll, we'll have to see. I'm very interested to see how every element of this series connects, because there's a lot of hanging threads right now. All day and night, I, I can't <clears throat> sleep, just droning, always droning. But, but that, that doesn't matter right now. I informed Mr. Porter in my report that the archaeological findings in the mountain are of monumental historical importance, and that there is certainly more to be discovered. Oh, definitely. And I recommended discontinuing construction there but it's not as though I have any authority over this project I'm guessing I fully expected to be ignored Mr. Paul called me on the evening of March 28th and we spoke on the phone briefly it was as I thought he disregarded my concerns hmm. I informed him that I wasn't going to return to the site he insisted I did said I was a valuable asset to the project Oh, this is yeah they're, they're testing people down there it's not just construction they're all test subjects aren't they even offered me a substantial raise and wanted me to lead a specifically organized team that would clear the tunnels of artifacts before excavation would continue i quote unquote could be responsible for the biggest historical finding of all time he said i refuse again i won't put a price on my sanity or my health I mean, that's fair. Yeah. What was happening to the crew. Now loading. Morally Greylock event. Group C. Survivor oh. data. Survival for patient. Survivors. B3590. Rockford. Thomas. Al formations. Taken? Oh, God. Notes. Communicative. Patient prone to spontaneous violent outbursts. Treatment of heavy sedation. So this is... Are we going to get a list? I think we're going to get a list of all of the survivors from that construction site incident and what happened to them afterwards, at least 
that's what I'm guessing. Oh, man. We're about to see what happened to all these people. It's making me a little bit nervous. The series is really well paced and really good at building tension. Patient recommended. Only communicate while patient is restrained or via intercom. So he's very violent. Loading. Profile for patient. B9231. Washington, Samuel. Samuel Washington. All formations. Okay. Notes. Communicative. Um. That's not how a person should look. That's like a walker straight out of The Walking Dead, dude. What are his malformations? Notes. Communicative. Patient suffers from constant state of severe paranoia and delusions, resulting in unpredictable violent outbursts. Standard treatment ineffective. High dose xylazine is recommended. Only communicate while patient is restrained or via intercom. Oh my now gosh. loading. Profile for patient. B6670. Herrera, Ramon. Oh no. All these people are... Now formations. Oh! Notes. Uncommunicative. Patient appears to be in catatonic state. Warning, patient may sit up very suddenly, without provocation, to project a vomit at any staff in area. What the Patient's hell? Patient's vomit is extremely corrosive and emits nerve gas. All treatments ineffective. Studies must be conducted with full anti-corrosive gear and air purifying respirator equipped on all staff involved. What? Malady. What? So, okay, so each of them is like different in their malformations. That guy will just sit up randomly out of a catatonic state and just vomit like tox toxic freaking sludge out of his mouth. This is insane. What the hell is happening? Profile for patient. B8816. Fleming, Charles. What happened to you, Fleming? Al formations. Oh. Notes. Uncommunicative. Warning. Patient will attack on sight. Do not interact. Immunity to pain. Patient exhibits cannibalistic tendencies. Oh no. All treatments ineffective. Immediate euthanasia recommended. Now loading. <laughs> They're just. Profile for patient. They just want to kill him off immediately. Oakhurst, Scott. Scott. Formations. Oh God. Oh God. Notes. Communicative. Communicate with caution. Warning. Patient actively pretends to be benevolent and friendly. Oh God. No. Strong homicidal and cannibalistic tendencies. So he he's basically Hannibal Lecter, but just a lot more scary looking. Killed and partially consumed six staff members on April 6th, 87. What? He. He what? And you're not going to euthanize this person? Tends to be benevolent and friendly. Strong homicidal and cannibalistic tendencies. Killed and partially consumed six staff members on April 6th, 87. Six staff members Patient got killed. Patient laughed hysterically during the attack. All treatments ineffective. Immediate euthanasia or permanent restraint for oh, further okay. study recommended. J now I would open. just euthanize them. for patient. B7992. Kowalski, Edward. How many of these are there? Now formations. I'm scared, dude. Oh my gosh. Notes. Communicative. Hazardous. Warning. Patient possesses inhuman power of suggestion and influence over others. Do not interact. What? All treatments ineffective. Immediate euthanasia recommended. He, he can literally just manipulate people like he's in a Fallout 3 conversation. What? I'm so confused. How many of these people survive? Now loading. Profile for patient. B1584. John. Rafferty, John. Now formations. Oh, God. Ugh. Notes. Uncommunicative. Hazardous. Patient appears to be deceased. No vital signs. Patient's body not decomposing. Warning. Staff have become ill after even brief time spent in patient's room. Illness disregards protective suiting. Immediate quarantine required for all victims. Mortality rate post exposure currently 92%. Survivor oh subject to rapid physical and mental malformations. All treatments ineffective. Immediate remote euthanasia recommended. Oh my gosh. I consider myself incredibly lucky to not be. That was nuts, dude. In that condition right now, oddly, he would be accepted my second refusal. Wished me luck in my future endeavors, but before I could say anything else, he, he hung up. But it seemed I'd made the right choice. I heard something awful happened up at Mount Greylock. And then simultaneously, 
There are all of these things that have been happening around the mountain. The home invasions, the dead bodies that fell from the sky over Cheshire. What? Wait, what? Dead bodies fell from the sky? Excuse me? When are we going to get to that? The phenomena. So many other unexplained The pregnancy things. phenomena? Okay. They all must be related. It's all Corton's back to the to mountain. How. I've connected with a local investigator who's been trying to get to the bottom of this. I've shared with him everything I have, though I feel that I've been being watched. I feel a looming threat that I can't really explain. Huh. Would the government really send someone to kill me over this? I feel Maybe. like I'm paranoid. Like I'm, I've lost some of my mind. I came home from the grocery store the other day, and my front door was unlocked. And I know I had locked it before I left. I scanned my entire house for traces of anything, uh. but found nothing out of the ordinary. I even checked and replaced all of the light bulbs. I'm not going home after that, no. You can find me at a oh hotel. God. Saying it out loud like this, it makes me realize how crazy I sound. I've always been a rational man. There's a logical explanation behind everything. Well, I'm glad that I put all of this into a recording. Perhaps that was what I needed to snap me out of this. Honestly, I feel much better just talking about it. Oh no. Oh my god! That's a basement door! Oh no way, he he recorded it. Thank God. He recorded it. Dude, what the hell are we about to see? Is the government gonna come in and destroy him or something else? I'm inside my bedroom closet. I'm going to keep the tape recorder running. Stop talking, bro! Stop talking! What happens to me and you'll find any tapes or files somehow? Please, bring it to the investigator, Jimmy Malcolm of North Adams. That goes for this video footage as well. Oh, that's scary. That's so scary. That's not the, the government or the FBI. That's something else out there. What is that? Oh god. We got some like alternate skinwalker thing. Trying to manipulate someone to come out and help them. Uh stuff freaks me out. Dude, I'm I'm nervous. Ah if you're gonna jump scare it, just get it over with, dude. Come on. It's getting closer. Oh. Come on out, it's the police. <laughs> oh! What was that? Oh. He just got destroyed. That was... <laughs> Holy crap, dude. You wanna talk good analog horror? This is where it's at. Oh my gosh, that was that thing that we saw moving around in the forest at the mountain. If you remember the security cameras from the last few episodes, let, let's see. Yeah, it was the sleeping dogs. They showed the security camera. That, that was the thing that had like the mask on it. Oh, it's creepy. So it came out and, and found him. Oh, weird. Okay, let's just move on to the next one. I'm just going to go through the rest of the series. Trojan Technology. 12 minutes long. These are decently long. Accessing GBS properties. 101. WRAV. FM. Radio station. Date of broadcast. December 13, 1963. Segment. Announcement of the National Access Initiative. 
Beginning playback. In one of his first acts after his historic succession, President Lyndon B. Johnson's administration has announced an upcoming program that will revolutionize communication and bring critical home electronics into every American household. All right, the let's National go. The Access Initiative, as it's been named, is a program designed to ensure that all citizens have equal access to vital communication tools and ways to stay informed, fostering connectivity, security, and unity across the nation. Is that real? Under Be sure to let me know. Breaking initiative, eligible American households will receive packages containing a myriad of electronics so that citizens may stay properly engaged with one another and remain knowledgeable regarding important events. Let's go. Electronics such That's as amazing. Telephones, televisions, and radios. These packages will also include items aimed at keeping families safe with devices such as smoke alarms, burglar alarms, and even flashlights. Well, this isn't that These bad. These things will empower individuals to not only stay involved in their communities, but to remain prepared for any emergency as well. President Johnson himself was quoted as saying that in this era of progress and innovation, it is crucial for every American to have the tools necessary as they navigate the challenges of modern life. God bless America. These electronics packages are being made available to American households through a partnership with world-renowned technology manufacturer Simeodyne. Oh, USA. okay. Yep, that's that's not good. Simeodyne is the uh, company that was um, coordinating <coughs> Unit 13. Assassin kills Kennedy, Lyndon Johnson, Sworn in. Okay, I see. <clears throat> Interesting. I wonder why they're showing us this. The technology giant's expertise. Security camera footage inside someone's home? Hmm. It's in creating cutting edge revolutionary technologies over the past <gasps> decades has made them a household name. And their gracious contribution to this initiative ensures that the devices provided will be of the highest quality. Oh yeah, so actually they, this company has been around for a long time. They were just a technology distributor, I guess, before they started doing all this stuff. Were they putting cameras into people's homes though? That's pretty creepy. That's someone sleeping in bed further enhancing nice. the experience and benefits for American citizens. Oh yeah, yeah sure. A quote during a press conference earlier this week, President of Simeodyne USA, Percival C. Rothwell, had a lot to say. Yeah. The National Access Initiative represents a milestone in our nation's journey towards progress and inclusivity. Hate this it's a picture. It's reflection of the American government and Simeodyne USA's unwavering commitment to empower every American citizen, regardless of age, location, or income, with the tools and resources needed to thrive in the electronic age. Through the miracle of modern communication, the word we... 1967, so this is a while ago. Interesting. 2% of American households still don't have a television in the house. This means they are less informed and are unable to respond to emergencies as quickly or efficiently. Mm -hmm. A much greater percentage of households have no smoke alarms to alert them in the event of a fire. Perhaps most shocking of all, 29% of Americans don't even have a telephone in their home. Meaning they're unable to call for aid or even just... Isn't it weird that back in the day they... This is how it was, dude, you know. I know I'm a youngster out here, but it's just, it's funny to me because now I just, you know, I got this with me, 24-7. <laughs> but back then, people didn't even have phones in their houses, you know. They didn't even have TVs or smoke alarms. Contact friends or family members. They were left disconnected. I wonder what it was like back then, you know, living without as much technology. Huh. I wonder why. Huh? Was 
that one. He's going to fucking expose our whole plan for the NAI program. The meeting couldn't have gone worse. If that fucking Nick thinks he's going to expose Simeon, he's got another thing coming. Oh, so Kennedy was going to expose Simeodine. Obviously, this doesn't happen in real life, but it seems like the reason in this universe why Kennedy was assassinated was because he was going to expose this company who was doing some really shady stuff, probably installing security cameras into people's homes to watch them, which is really shady. And he got shot in the head for it, I guess. That is... Ugh. I love the real world connections here. This this is great. This series keeps continuing to surprise me. Well, we're not the only ones he's pissed off lately. After rejecting Operation Northwoods, and then that executive order involving the Federal Reserve, there are a lot of snakes in the grass. And it's about time that Kennedy got bit. Oh, jeez. Yep. Wow. The future. And as the great, great grandson of our company's founder and its current president, I'll tell you one irrefutable fact. You're going to get us all killed. All roads lead to connectivity. Without connectivity, we have no future. The more isolated individuals are from one another, the weaker they are. The more easily defeated they are and the less likely they are to see the value of their own lives. But what is their goal? Hey, Han, have you seen the car keys? Humanity has stood many times. We keep flashing in between the security cameras in the home. So what is Simeodine's goal? That's what I want to know. It has something to do with the mountain. And from what I can tell, in the last few episodes, there's been a running theme of man almost, like, pushing the boundaries too far. Trying to get closer and closer to becoming a god, or get close to god. Because when we get as close to god as we can, are we even, like, still human? Is basically, like, the running theme that I'm seeing throughout. You know, humanity pushing things too far and it's going to come back and bite us in the ass eventually. The precipice of extinction. And the only reason we are still here today is because we stood there together. What? USA is what was that? What the f What was that? What? Is that I wonder can I no I want to go frame by frame I don't think it'll let me some kind of weird messiah I I don't know if there's a way to go frame by frame on YouTube I'm sure that there is I just don't know how to do it so I don't know I'll, once again I'll leave it to Wendigoon hold on hold on hold on hold on the N I the N A I program was a trap. They are watching. They are listening. Fuck L B J. Fuck Simeodine. I won't be your lab rat anymore. So some people are figuring it out. This is 1990. Okay, so this is years later. We make a promise to continue to support you into the future as well. Whether it's from a lack of infrastructure or a lack of income, no one should be restricted access to potentially life-saving and life-enhancing technology. Mm, money. And this, this is only the beginning. We have so much more planned so that Americans can all truly be equal in our society. This isn't... Connectivity, accessibility. It is our belief that it is these three factors. I that hate this image America so much. The best country in the world. What am I looking at? 1993, September 13th. It's 1 a.m. in the morning. Please do not jump scare me. The series is so good at jump scares. Dude, stop it. 
It's really too quiet. Please don't do it. I'm f I'm f I'm f Motherfucker. <laughs> oh, screw you, man. Mr. Rothwell. Hold on, just a patty flipping minute, Mr. Krabs. Okay, we got some weird looking cult members out in the forest now. Presumably at the mountain. Mr. Rothwell also stated that these monumental benefits won't only be made available to American households, but to police and fire departments, schools, and to small businesses as well. They're going to be watching the schools now? Hell no. Why are they? They just want to monitor everything. The Johnson administration has stated that while they are going to begin launching this landmark program right away, it will first be made available only in select areas as construction crews from coast to coast prepare to establish important infrastructure that will support the National Access Initiative program. 1994. Three th Homie, what is that thing? <laughs> huh? Don't flip on the light switch. Oh no, dude. No, no, no. I fucking hate this shit, dude. Ah, it's so creepy. What is that thing, dude? Is that a thought form? Is that what that is? Oh, uh, I'm tense right now, dude. I'm super tense. I. Mm. <laughs> Don't get darker. Oh, there you are. Oh, Please. Are you? Don't. I'm freaking out, dude. Oh, this has got me so on edge. Oh, I've never dreaded a jump scare more in my life. I am your imaginary friend. Oh, shoot. Yeah. It is a thought form. Hold, I'm sorry to keep pausing in this segment. One, because uh, I'm just outing myself as like a lesser form of man uh, by pausing it because I'm scared. But at the same time, this is a thought form because this is an imaginary friend created by a child. And thought forms are manifestations of a person's sheer will to make something exist or become real. I'll tell you what, children are scary for more reasons than one. This is one of them. Imagine an imaginary friend becoming real. I don't know what I would, I don't know what I would think. I didn't have imaginary friends as a kid. Did any of you guys have imaginary friends? Let me know if anyone even watches this video. I am your imaginary friend. This is creepy. My imaginary friend? But I didn't imagine him. You must have begun to hear I am. Oh, weird. You probably just don't remember. Who did the voice acting for I this? Your doctor's office place that I had to go to. Oh. I think Oh god. Oh god. Oh god. I noticed they were a little dirty. So I wanted to clean them oh, for you. Oh no, girl, don't do it. Yes, they look all shiny. Oh my god. No, no. This is so Here. messed up. Come get them. No. Then you'll be able to no. Hell no. Oh, thank you. 
Hell no. Don't do it. Hell no. Oh my god. You reach out and I'll put them into your hand. Hell no. Okay. I'm freaking out, dude. Okay. Don't do it. Closer. No. 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 Stop it. Stop it. Just get it over with already. God. You're building up this jump scare. I know it's coming, dude. Stop it! Stop it! Stop it! We. Oh my God. The Johnson administration went. We just watched a kid get killed. You see the. The time was like, three twelve. It's three seventeen. Look at how much blood is on the screen. This kid got annihilated. The Johnson administration went on to say that their current projections for a nationwide release are for some time between oh. mid-1966 and early 1967. This... Citizens will be mailed informational packets regarding the National Access Initiative, <clears throat> including information on how to apply as the program becomes available in our area. 1987. <gasps> okay, I'm not even gonna do a Five Nights at Freddy's meme. Hello? Hello, you've reached Alex Marsh and Tiffany Crisaldi. We're not able to get to the phone, so please leave a message after the tone and we'll get back to you as soon as we can. It killed the whole family. Okay. Um. Wow. Uh, this series gives me hella anxiety. Wow, I've never been so on edge while watching an analog horror video. I'm, I'm damn impressed, dude. We just watched a kid get killed, guys. This is dark. Okay, let's just move on to the next one. And this one, we have Tape 10, Messages from the Dead. This is 20 minutes. God, I gotta turn that down, that's so loud. Okay, very Blair Witch of you to start off in a forest with a black and white camera. Just walking through the forest, having a jolly old time. The squirrel. Oh, poor guy. Don't show it closer. Oh no, it's a mouse. What the heck? Don't show me a dead mouse. Was that a rat? Might actually be a rat. Don't show me a dead rat, dude. What are you doing? Oh, wait, that's... That's like the gloved hand that hit the windowsill. Is this one of those home invaders? Don't show it to me, dude. What the hell? What are you doing? I don't know what that was about. Oh, back to this? Okay. Um, hello? 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 I wanted to record a message for you. Hey, babe. I'm just checking in. Could you please give me a call as soon as you can? Don't worry about work, either. Please. You're way more important, okay? Okay. I love you. Is this a different month? I thought it was October. Um, after we lost the baby, um, I stayed home for a while. Oh! Um, we both took a heart, but... This is after the... Really worried about Tiffany. This is after the baby disappeared. She seemed to uh, only be getting worse with time. She spent a lot of time by herself. When it came time for me to return to work, we... Decided I would call home every day during my lunch break. 
40 minutes later. I've been talking every day since I've been back to work, so, you know, just, I'm getting a bit worried, so, please call me back, okay? Love you. What the hell? What? What the heck? Okay, I'm not sure what's going on, but I'm gonna head home. I'm sorry, I'm just... I'm kind of freaking out. I'll be there soon. Now it's I like an you. hour later than from that first phone call. There was like some weird altar with some candles and like a, a pentagram looking thing, dude. This is getting wild. Dr. Heinrich Albrecht, medical examiner, Westfield. Okay. May 19th, 1987, 3.23pm. Integral report for Tiffany Elaine Marie Crisaldi. Okay. Caucasian female, age 28, 29, 26, 30, 30, 30, 25. <clears throat> um, uh, case number 87-091-HA. This autopsy will be conducted at the request of the Adams Police Department. Okay, yeah, so she's dead. Um, after her baby disappeared, something, something bad happened. Initial oh. external evaluation reveals a resinous black substance adhered to the face, neck, and upper thoracic region. Uh. Samples have been obtained. Uh, additionally, the eyes are fully retracted. These observations are aside from any traditional indicators of struggle or violence what the and the cause of death. A rigor and lever mortis align with the estimated time of death. Huh. It, uh, weird. What a weird condition to find a body of in. particular note, and the reason for this specialist report, is an unusual finding on the abdomen, specifically below the sternum. A symbol of some sort has been carved into the flesh. What the hell? Equally concerning is the absence of hemorrhaging in the surrounding tissues. Due in part to this, I have been able to ascertain that this symbol was carved into the skin post-mortem. Oh. In regard to timing, based on my analysis, I would say the cuts were likely made several hours after death. We're weird. <clears throat> well, photographs and casts have been made for further analysis. I'll be consulting with forensic anthropologists and symbology experts to better understand the nature and potential significance of the symbol. What do... Yeah. In summary, while the exact cause of death is yet to be determined, it is the carving that requires the initiation of an immediate and in-depth investigation. So sh they don't even know how she died, and they find this carving on her skin that was put there like hours after she was dead and that's why they're they're investigating okay yeah that's unique um don't know what that is this aspect of the case should be treated with utmost priority due to its unusual and unnerving nature it's unnerving you can say that again yeah. okay tiffany we're recording now okay so tiffany you just had your sixth birthday, didn't you? This is her when she's a child. Yeah. Did you have a party? Yeah. How was it? I don't good. Like, I don't like this guy's That's voice. That's good. He's gonna hear like, That's good. Yeah, <laughs> what? I don't like it. You're awfully quiet today. 
Are you seeing them again? Yes. Can you see them right now? Yes. Where are they? Where are they, Tiffany? There. <laughs> Everywhere. Private lock for case file 87-091-HA for my home archives. The date is May 19, 1987. Time is 8.03 p.m. I conducted an examination of Miss Tiffany Crisaldi today. Her body arrived shortly before I was to leave the office for the day, but I decided to at least begin external examinations. Though it seems misfortune loomed over the proceedings. Electrical flickers and inexplicable drops and spikes in room temperature. Uh, repairs may be required. That's weird in and of itself, dude. You start to go in for an autopsy and then the lights start flickering. And the room temperature changes. <laughs> okay. I wanted to refrain from mentioning this part whatsoever, but... What? What? What's? What you find? I feel compelled to do so. After placing Miss Crisaldi in storage and moving on to cleaning up, my sister Sarah mentioned that she heard what sounded like oh god, banging a woman crying oh. coming from the direction of the cooler. Oh my god, that's so creepy. <laughs> There are so many creepy situations in this series. You're working in a morgue. And you hear a woman crying in the freezer after she's been dead for presumably hours or days or whatever. <sighs> I'm watching this right before bed. This was a really, really bad idea. Shrugged off her remark and let her leave early telling her she was likely stressed or overtired, and I continued cleaning up on my own. <clears throat> I didn't dare to tell her that I heard it as well. Okay. Oh, we gonna hear it? Or are we gonna see something? Okay, are you ready to... I think so. Are you nervous? Yeah. Okay. I'll need you to follow my instructions, okay, Tiffany? As long as you do that, everything will be fine. Can you do that for me? Okay. Good. I'm going to play some sounds that will help you through this exercise. Begin audio prompt in three, two, one. Good. Now close your eyes and keep them closed until I tell you to open them. I want you to picture yourself standing outside your house in your front yard. It's a beautiful day out with big fluffy clouds in the blue sky. No one else is around. Now look down at the grass around you and watch how each blade moves in a gentle breeze. Now look forward and see your house. This is unironically super... And look around and see the trees around your yard. Super creepy. Watch how the breeze affects the leaves as it passes through. Make the wind blow a little harder. Enough so the branches are swaying a little bit. You can hear all the rustling of the leaves around you. Wind calms down now, mm -hmm. and you begin walking very slowly towards the front door. Um, I... this is... I should not be watching this before bed, damn... Dude, I am gonna have nightmares. ...of your house. Step. 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 
step. And with each step you take, it looks like the day's getting later and later. Soon the golden rays of the sunset are shining against your house. The front door is closer now, but you still have some more steps to go. Okay. Step. 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 Now you're only three steps from the door. Step. Step. The sun vanishes behind the trees, going down. Hmm. Step. Step. The stars begin twinkling in the sky above, and the moon shines its soft glow over everything around you. Step. Step. You arrive at the front door. You reach out your hand, turn the door knob. This music sucks, dude. Your house looks like it always does at night time. Except you're the only one here now. You take off. Did y'all ever have an experience as, like, kids when you wake up in your house at night? And it's not like your parents are gone or anything. They're just in their room. But their room is, like, all the way on the other side of the house. So you wake up and you just have this eerie feeling. You're in darkness. And you want to go you know, find your parents. So you get out of bed, you step barefoot onto like your carpeted floor, and then you start walking across your house to get to their room, but it's pitch black and you just feel utterly alone. It's one of the weirdest feelings ever. And it's only like I, for me personally I only experienced it in childhood I don't have that now but I, re I distinctly remember walking to like my mom's room through the darkness of my own home and just feeling so alone and just like unease it, not like I was being watched or anything I just felt wrong it just it, it felt like something was inherently wrong with the situation I was in even though it was completely normal it's just weird. This is giving me vibes of that. Your shoes. First the right shoe. Then the left shoe. I don't like this, dude. You can feel the floor against your feet. Mm-hmm. You can smell the familiar aroma of your house. Everything is in its proper place. You are alone. You're going to walk quietly to your bedroom now. You come to the stairs and begin to walk up. You hold on to the banister as you go, letting your hand slide up. Step. Step. Why is Dr. Doofenshmirtz Step. explaining Step. this in such vivid detail, dude, with this horrifying music? Away. Everything is in its proper place. Oh God! You are alone. What's about to happen? Nobody else is here with you. You look to the right, and you can see your bedroom door closed at the end of the hall. This is quite literally and a nightmare scenario. Nice and calm towards it. You see the door coming closer with each step. You can see the pink flower stickers that you put on it two years ago, and the small wooden sign that reads Tiffany. With the little blue bird in the corner. How do you know all this? Step. You been in my house? Step. 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 I hate this. This is an actual nightmare. You're at your bedroom door now. Oh my god. You reach out your hand and grasp the doorknob and turn. The door opens, and you can see that your room looks just like it did the last you saw it. Okay. You see the colorful quilt on your bed. Can we stop? You see your small white dresser with all the stickers and scuff marks, just like always. Your stuffed animals are all resting by your purple toy box. You feel comfortable. You feel safe. You are alone. I don't feel safe. You walk into a room, and that's when you can see something different that's never been there before. Oh, what is it? Tell me what you see. It's... It's a 
door next to my window. That's right. It's a door. What? What does the door look like, Tiffany? What? It, it looks black. It has weird marks on it. The wood looks weird. Walk to the door and open it. I'm scared. It doesn't matter if you're scared. You must open the door. This is awful. This is awful. Good job, Tiffany. Now tell me what's on the other side of the door. She did it. It's a small room. Somebody's in there. No, Tiffany, you're alone. No. No. Oh, God. There's someone here. He's facing away from me. Oh, God. He's standing and tall. It's gonna be that He's masked very thing. Tall. Tiffany, you are alone. Nobody else is there. Now tell me what else is in the room. Dude, I'm nervous. There's a TV. The screen is all fuzzy. Okay. And the tall man is watching it. Tiffany, I want you to focus on removing the man from your mind. When I snap my fingers, he will be gone. Oh God, don't do you it. You will be don't alone. Don't do it. Don't do it. Jump scare has happened. Uh. The man's shaking. Oh, God. His body is cracking. Okay, Tiffany, I'm going to count down from five. When I snap my fingers, you will return to the real world. What is five. going on? You're feeling more awake He's now. turning around. Oh, God. Four. Everything around you is becoming He's amazing. looking at me. Dude, dude. Three, dude. Tiffany, you can feel the chair don't sitting in again. do this Two. bullshit Everything to me again. Blackness behind you. One. Full control of your body. Who... What the f- <sighs> God! The tension there! Dude, what are you doing? I don't want to see a rat be dissected. Can't deal with animal stuff, dude. I can watch people get torn up as much as I want, but not animals. Gun digest. Got some gun. What are those VHS tapes or or their books? What is happening right now? I. Wh how did we get here? <laughs> how did we get here? Oh, there's a tape inside of it. What? Maybe this isn't an intruder. Maybe this is someone else? I don't know. Oh. Are, are we familiar with Jim, or do we not know who Jim is? I'm a little bit lost. Oh um, my god, that's what I was thinking it was gonna be. Oh, oh my god, I didn't expect it to open. Oh god, I see the face! What's up with you, Tiffany? What's your deal? Oh, there's one more left. Tape 11. That last one was insane. I mean, all these have been insane. What can I say? 
This is amazing. Preparations for a guest. Tape 11. Let's go. Inside these walls, basement renovation. At 3 a.m., what channel broadcasts at 3 a.m. in the morning? No normal channel, I guess. this you need to fix your camera quality dog camera quality camera quality okay my man's came prepared for a home invasion You should screw that into the wall. What, well, is it just a little show and tell to show us your freaking barricade mechanism? What are you doing? Don't tell me there's something out there. The candles again. With the symbol. Okay, some kind of altar. Now he's showing the outside. Where are you at, dude? Okay. Got a tape player. All right. Get her done, man. Show it to me. Do we not get to hear it? Oh. What am I watching? That's it? You're gonna leave me with that? Now I gotta wait, like, months for the next installment? Are you kidding me? Wow, okay. Um, wow, okay. That was Greylock, guys. Um, I enjoyed that, but it made me tense as hell. Wow, this is a really good analog horror series. There's only about five, or not five, 50,000 subscribers to this channel, please go check out Greylock. This is amazing analog horror, and I can't wait to see what they do next. In fact, I'm going to turn on those notifications for that, because that was incredible. Um, I'm not too sure what to make of the story so far. Maybe I'll make an analysis video uh, just to lay it all out for myself moving forward, and then just post it for you guys as entertainment. I don't know. We'll see. But yeah, I really like that. It's, it's very inspiring to see that analog horror can still be this good um, all these years later, like after the local 58s. All right, but that's gonna do it for me, guys. If you enjoyed this one, um, or this video, um, feel free to like if you want. I don't like to push it at all. I mean, your views just are enough for me. So yeah, just stay safe and stay cool, I guess. Um, go check out Greylock. Okay, bye.